Hi guys, it's M here and I'm here with Rice TV. Chris Rice, how you doing? Doing great, man. I really appreciate you uh, inviting me on for your documentary in regards to Joseph Gregory Hallett. Looking yeah. For, looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, good. I mean, we caught up. Um, I was going to check, actually. I forgot to check, but it must have been, I don't know, September time, perhaps, or August? No, if, yeah, yeah, it, feels September. Like, it feels like forever ago, though, doesn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, well, it, is, it is nearly half a year ago. So, I mean, it was soon after I set up my channel, actually. Right. Um, and we obviously connected um, because we were both looking into um, Greg, this Greg Hallett, who, um, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure most of you do watching, uh, was claiming to be the rightful King of England, as well as many other titles and many other territories, and also uh, claimed to be the, um, hold, hold the title Christ. Um, yeah. So some massive, uh, big claims um, uh, for titles for himself. Um, obviously, we both looked into him. Uh, and you, had, you, you were connected to some of the people that were working with him and yeah. uh, we both investigated and um, we both believe that he, uh, these are tall tales. Oh, totally. And I'll, and I'll kind of give you the rundown of like how I got involved. A, f- a friend of mine told me about Greg Hallett and I started going down the rabbit hole and looking into what this story was all about because it's a pretty interesting story when you first hear about it. Absolutely. So I started checking out um, different people who had interviewed Greg and started reaching out to people. And that's how I met Stan Barabbas from Bodhisattva Love because he had done an interview with him. It was like maybe mid to late May. Yeah. We connected early June, late May, early June. And then we started doing videos together. I got connected up with Charlie Ward and David Mahoney. They were giving us permission to upload the documentaries. I was trying to remain as unbiased from a journalistic point of view regarding the situation. I've been requesting interviews, um, brought David on the show, David Mahoney, brought Charlie Ward on a couple of times. And then, you know, as I was going down, I, I had found some research very early on and kind of had a good idea of what I thought the outcome was going to be, but didn't really have everything completely in line as far as facts and evidence. Um, so I was trying to remain as, as unbiased as possible. And I was assured several times by Charlie Ward, by uh, David Mahoney and other people involved that I would get an interview with Greg. And so that's when I was going to try to, you know, go over some of these um, things that seemed to be false and incorrect mm-hmm. information. And I wanted to ask him about it directly as opposed to going through those other channels Mm -hmm. and um after about three months or so i never got the interview got a little bit fed up because i saw where things were going they knew what questions i wanted to ask because i had asked them in advance uh per david mahoney's final suggestion was to put together an email send it to both of them he would make sure greg read it and he assured me that greg would more than definitely do the interview but obviously it hadn't happened and um so then i I did a video and I got a playlist. I would encourage people to check out on Rice TVX for Joseph Gregory Hallett for all the videos that I've done. But um, I did a video talking about the letter, reading the letter out to everybody and playing a voice note from Mahoney, which he got mad about me playing that, but it was vetting what I was doing. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't really care uh, at that point. So um, because I really felt like smoke was being blown up my ass. Yeah. And so, you, you, uh, they, uh, both Charlie and David had, had said to you that it should be no problem. Um, your request for an interview, you know, it should go ahead, perhaps put the, get together some questions. You sent over those questions and suddenly the tune changed. Well, no. Th- so it was still just kind of like the waiting game. And okay. so I told that I reached out to everybody and said, look, I've gotten in contact with, uh, Greg's sisters and I'm going to bring them on a show. I'm going to do an interview with them. Mm. And before I release it, I want to give Greg an opportunity to go ahead and accept my, my invitation. And so I did an interview. I don't know the specific date, but it was a Sunday evening. And, yeah. and I put it up on my YouTube channel unedited right away. And I sent links to Charlie, to David, to Gregory, Greg, and all the other people involved and was like, I have not released this publicly. Mm-hmm. I'm going to release it publicly but I'm giving you the opportunity to accept my invitation for this interview. So I did this for a whole week 
for a whole week, I was trying to tell Mahoney and Ward what I knew. And they were still kind of going along with the story. Mm -hmm. And then you started coming out a little bit heavier with your videos. And then they started having to Ward, especially started changing his tune a little bit. Yeah. And, um, and then I went on his show trying to talk to him about that. And that's when he, he, he nicknamed me the American pit bull Ah. because he told me I just wouldn't stop. I wouldn't let, let off. And that's, Mm. you know, that was the point. And I still, I don't tell you this, but I still send emails like once every couple of weeks to Greg, Mm -hmm. you know, the the invitation is still open and and Greg's so vain. I know he's going to watch this documentary because it's about him. So the invitation is open, my friend. Um, and you know, if I, you would think if you were in Greg's shoes that, um, you know, because you, you weren't, um, obviously <laughs> maybe a pit bull might've been, uh, not, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but you are, um, you, you know, you don't let go of something, uh, you know, you, you really did want to have this interview and you were trying to be very fair about it and you wanted well, to have with you and you were open and honest and you were saying, look, I've got the sisters, but I, I'll give you a chance. You can speak first. But at that point, at that point, it was like, I went from being an unbiased journalist to, I know this, this is factual. And I'm just, and I was very adamant about that. So, and I was offended about the whole Christ thing. So there was a video or two where my passion definitely came through. And, Mm. and so, yeah. I mean, you did, you, was it on Facebook? live that you uploaded a video um, yeah and then i think i put it up on my youtube channel and then yeah. i ended up making a video a couple of days later kind of sort of apologizing for letting my emotions get the best that, of me that but was in our of, video yeah but, but a lot of people appreciated the um the passion you know there, yeah there's, there's some people who's like i really appreciate that and i've got a lot more good feedback from that versus the negative but at the same time i'm still trying to to be the change I want to see in this world with my practice change Mm -hmm. stuff. So, I mean, I want to admit publicly when I may have done something that I maybe shouldn't have done, or maybe should have waited a little bit of time for the emotion to kind of ride out. So it wasn't just all rah. I I really respected that. And I respected what you said in in the interview that we did, that Stan was in as well, um, where you just kind of said that it got the emotions got the better of me at the time. Um, I realized that, you know, um, and uh, I think you were also, um, it also maybe hit a nerve with you. Sort of Greg was questioning whether you are a journalist. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, those emails where he was. Yeah. And that was actually ironic because it was when Stan, Stan had to come up to Virginia and he stayed at my house for a couple of days. And it was during that time period of all time periods that Greg sends me an email is when Stan's there. And yeah, it was like, um, because I was asking for proof of, him say because in the common law courts in England, he put on all his paperwork saying that he was the heir of you know and related in bloodline to Queen Victoria, to Sir Walter Raleigh, to Queen Elizabeth, and it was it, it got to be a lot. And so I'm like, can you provide any sort of evidence of said information? Because I and I did a video too of going through my lineage, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and I and I and I backed it up with factual information and so you know it's like we can all do that and I did that with his sister so I started to understand what his lineage was Mm -hmm. so when he was asking me you know for my journalistic uh, credentials and things like that I was like you know anybody can be a journalist yeah, you don't anyway. need a car that's saying you're a journalist. Right, I don't need a card. I don't need to join an association or some union or go to school or any of that stuff. Anyone can be a journalist. It's, it's just what kind of journalist are you wanting to be? And not everything that I do is a form of journalism, mm-hmm. but I do incorporate like journalistic research in what I do. It, it's a part of it. Yeah. But no, when you I- search for truth, I mean, you're the seeker of truth. M seeker of truth. When you seek truth and you go down that path and you start finding enough evidence that starts to give you an impression of what the truth is, you then start to become unbiased. Now, if you're like uh, a journal, like a journalist who's researching something that you don't care about, you could take your emotion out of it. You can do something completely unbiased, like go cover a, a dog fair. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or something like that. You know, there's no, there's no equity that we have in that. So, um, but when you search for truth and you go in it unbiasedly, at some point that changes. Yeah, I mean, and it has to, because if you find in truth, uh, or, or what you believe to be truth backed by hard, hard evidence, it's going to change your bias. You're going to um, come to a conclusion in your own mind and, and whether or not uh, it's very difficult to then, and it is a skill to, to, to be, uh, to seem unbiased or, or act unbiased right. uh, when you are reporting on something. Um, it is, it's a difficult skill to, to step back well, I would say by month two, I was already at that point, but mm-hmm. for two months, I tried to just, you know, be as unbiased with mm-hmm. my words and what I was saying and who I was bringing on the show and how I was portraying yeah. things. So, um, yeah, so obviously, um, uh, you didn't get that interview with Greg in the end, um, and uh, so you said, so you, is, he, is he still ignoring your emails? I'm guessing completely, or yeah, he I, haven't got, I haven't gotten any kind of response since yeah. um, the the week of trying to badger me. Oh, and then also he's wanting same thing he wanted from you. He wanted my address and contact information. I think he was trying to get my social security number and banking information as well. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he's he going was overboard. Cause he is a funny dude. I mean, he's funny yeah. as hell. He's he would be a, he would be a great comedian and he would make an awesome, uh, mm. like uh, nonfiction writer, you know, or Absolutely, fiction writers, yeah. like doing like a game of Thrones kind of series. Mm. He could, he's got such a creative imagination. That's right. And I think that that made him um, very likable and very believable for a lot of people. Um, And also because, you know, not everything that Greg has said, you know, is is complete uh, fluff, you know, because a lot of the research that he'd done early on and was putting out about royal family and things like that, you know, there's a lot of it that rings true. And Mm -hmm. um, so people... Um, looked at that, and especially people that knew him before he was saying he was king were reading his books, you know, um, even right. Tom Carhill that he lived with that then came out and said, you know, this whole king thing, him saying he's king, this is, this is nuts. But actually before <laughs> I read his books, it was really interesting. That's how I met him. Um, uh, so, but the problem is, is when he, he then starts peppering in fantasy to, to what he's applied knowledge, you know, applied, you know his, uh, the whole king scenario, and, and, and we both looked into this um, Francisco Manuel. Yeah. So Greg had written these books, uh, for any of you who don't know, uh, the Hidden Kings books. And he'd written them with a guy called uh, Francisco Manuel, who was apparently meant uh, to uh, be the descendant of... The four-time, uh, four-time great-grandson of Marcos Manuel. That's right, yeah. Which who, was supposed who, who, to be the Ill- illegitimate son of Queen Victoria. Absolutely. And uh, that's where the story started. Um, but at some point, the story got disjoined. Um, Francisco disappeared from the picture. Um, Greg Hallett was gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, and, and he was gaining this by saying that actually, no, he was the rightful king. Um, the Francisco Manuel story was sort of forgotten about, not mentioned from this point onwards. Uh, and it's around the time where he then met um, Jack Kidd, Charlie Ward, David Mahoney, and they started organizing, you know, trying to make a documentary on him and whatnot. But um, well, we, we, we all questioned, you know, who is at that time, who is Francisco Manuel? And they, they, they would not answer. Um, and until conveniently, eventually, those books weren't available. They Conven- weren't. Conveniently, those books were not even available. You couldn't. They disappeared. Right. Um, and Greg says because they were um, destroyed by um, Prince Philip. Yeah. Uh, as well as um, he's made some other outrageous claims. Prince Philip stole his car, for instance. Prince Philip's a con man. Pedophile, Nazi, heroin trafficker, mass murderer, murderer, contract killer. And he's, he, he even stole my car in London in 2012. <laughs> Prince Philip stole my car. I'm sure. Stole Prince Philip my... stole your car. Prince Philip stole my car. Mercedes Vito van. He stole it. <laughs> he absolutely stole it. I'm sure. Well, why in God's name did he car. do that, Greg? He could afford a zillion of them on his yeah. own. Thank you. Money. Yeah, I mean, there's so many to list, uh, and you know, obviously, as as you know, I'm trying to make a documentary, trying to 
compile all this information, all the research that you've done, that I've done, that others have done, uh, all the videos that have been made and all, all of the revelations that we've found um, regarding this story. Um, so Francisco Manuel was one part of that um, and Charlie Ward eventually did come clean, I think, because perhaps the pressure was on. Um, people like us asking, who was Francisco Manuel? Eventually, it, it, he then admitted, well, I, he did know who Francisco Manuel was, but he decided not to talk about him because he thought he'd give Greg a chance to tell the truth. Right. It's convenient after me and you went out publicly and then others started to go after it. Because, I mean, at the time, you you were doing a great job, but your channel was really small at the time. So the voice wasn't getting out there. And I, I'm hoping that I made some sort of slight impact in hoping to crack, even bringing you on me and Stan's show, Bodhisattva Love Show, um, I think hopefully gave that more of a voice. And I noticed that Absolutely. soon after you were getting a little bit more attention on Twitter, yeah. there were different people that were retweeting you, um, retweeting some of your posts. And so they were getting a lot of attention. So it was with Charlie Ward gaining popularity. What was he going to do? Mm. I mean, yeah. he had to save his I think ass. even his own fans were starting to say, well, yeah, but uh, this M guy, uh, and this, this, uh, you know, this Chris Rice, uh, who is this Francisco Manuel guy? And, and, uh, I think that you're full of it. And eventually, I, I, you know, I don't think that Charlie Ward was fully invested in this, you know, but David Mahoney, his good friend was. <laughs> um, and also he'd been on camera saying that, you know, this is the real King of England um, and the, the holder of many titles and all the predictions on him coming true. Hey guys, today I'm with Jack Kidd and we have the absolute pleasure to be joined today uh, with, with Greg Hallett, the real king of England. He has a bunch of titles. <laughs> has a bunch of titles and fulfills all the predictions. God save Donald Trump. God save our children. God save King John the Third. Yada yada. So he had really heavily associated himself at the beginning with with so it was it's it's hard then to then backtrack, but I think there came a point where Charlie had to go, right, okay, this is gonna be, this is damaging my following now, it's dam dam damaging my credibility. And he tried to then um, hook me up with Dave Mahoney, who obviously, as you know, had already didn't, <laughs> wasn't fond of me and had <laughs> threatened to come and find me in England and, and offer people money for my name and whatnot. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think there came a point where Charlie had to dis disassociate himself. I was like, Tell you what, it'd be more relevant for you to talk to David because I'm not in this King thing anymore, you know? And then uh, obviously David then uh, changed his mind after one of the videos I made um, on me and said, you know, I, I won't talk to you. So, um, but Charlie had in a lot of his viewers eyes um, had redeemed himself because he'd come clean. And, and in some way he had, because you know, eventually he told the truth. He didn't keep going with it. Well, we did a collaboration afterwards um, where we talked about it. And, you know, I was asking him some very, you know, straightforward questions in regards to the thing because I knew what was going on you know, and oh. I never got the interview with with Greg so I mean the next best thing for me to do was to sit here and have a conversation with Charlie and you know um, try to be as professional about it like I don't hate Charlie uh, we still communicate and stuff but I don't support what he does and I definitely try to let people know that a lot of what he says tends to be just a lot of um, crap and none yeah. of it really comes true. And it just keeps, it's like almost fear porn and sensationalism. Hope porn even. Um, well, the sensationalism, hope. fear porn and hope porn, a little bit of a combo of both because people, it, they're, they're, they're looking at things from a, we have an enemy perspective yeah. and, you know, but, but trust the plan. And so yeah. um, he's just definitely riding that wave. Um, he, I think he's just an old dude whose son died and he's, he's liking the popularity and he's just, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't really think like he has attention. any of the intel or the connections that he claims to have. This, this is, this is the thing, you know, I, I, I don't hate Charlie Ward. I never professed to hate him. I even did an interview with him myself. Um, and, you know, he tried, it seemed like he was trying his best to answer all my questions. I don't think he quite, um, expected some of the questions that I was going to ask, and uh, but he answered them. Um, 
And, you know, he entertained me. He didn't have to have me on the show. And even though I don't think he fully knew what I was about, he knew what I was about. So he knew that he was going to... Well, he wasn't live. He still put the video up, so... Yeah, exactly. And and so, um, but, you know, I did I, I did challenge him somewhat on there. But since then, also, he's made a lot of predictions that haven't come true. And I don't know if you've seen recently, I've made a few videos on Charlie Ward. Um, and I've got quite a lot of backlash from his followers, but um, ever since kind of the inauguration and some of the promises or uh, predictions, yeah. promises that Charlie Ward and Simon Parks had made had not come true. Um, we're starting to see a lot of people going, well, hang on, um, maybe maybe we should step back and have a look at the bigger picture um, because maybe I, either may, maybe Charlie's lying or maybe uh, there is someone giving him intel, but it's not, it's not real. Um, right. He may so, he may think that what he's who he's talking to if he's talking to somebody he may believe that now um, David Mahoney though on the other hand he's somebody who I've grown to strongly dislike uh, I don't wish any ill will towards him yeah uh, but I definitely don't want to really have any interactions with a person like that um, he's just kind of shown his true colors to me blocking me being very disrespectful talking negatively about me um, publicly and in, in private messages to people and then um, threatening me with slander and libel when none of those things transpired. But mm-hmm. so it just, you start to see the, the nature of people. I mean, I will say that Charlie Ward, at least, you know, I mean, by having conversations with you, yeah. with me and, and others in, in regards to um, like justice, um, mm-hmm. it, it shows he's a little bit more open-minded and he's not just trying to shut you out and yeah. avoid you. And he's really, he's willing, even if it's BS, he's willing to deal with it head on. So, I mean, yeah. I, I got to show a little bit of respect for that. And then yeah. with so, Greg also, I, I want to say just so it's not completely all negative. Yeah. Some of the good things that have come out of me going into researching Greg is, you know, I've got to meet Stan from Body South for Love, I got to meet you. I got to meet a lot of great people, and you know, a lot of caring people. It took me down a path to learn about myself, things that yeah. I didn't really care about in the past, and and I'm glad that I learned about my lineage and my history. And it took me down this path of a stronger path of freedom because it of where things kind of led me in uh, the way that the universe was lining things up for me. So, but it wouldn't have happened, I feel, it, had I not gone down the path of Greg Hallett. So, mm-hmm. um, and I've been learning about things about the UK history, which I never cared about royal history in the UK and things like that. It didn't concern me. Mm-hmm. And um, so, I mean, it was, there are some good things that That's have it. come out of this and I don't oh, want yeah. to make I- it as if. I think I think ultimately Greg has mental problems, and I don't say that to be negative. I say that yeah. out of concern, out of love, yeah. because I care about every, whether I like you or not. I can still be compassionate and caring towards you. Yeah, and absolutely. you know, I I think that mental mental illness is something that people can't can't and shouldn't joke about and play around with and make fun of. Um, but equally, it's important to shine a light on where others may be affecting people's mental health or taking advantage of the vulnerable and that's kind of what well that is why I do what I do and and I have to echo everything you've just said because um, I feel exactly the same I've met so many people I started a YouTube channel because I was kind of concerned about people from this Greg Hallett thing so Greg Hallett let me to do that let me to meet the, the likes of you and lots of others um, but also um, you know the, the the group the Facebook group that I have and lots of people uh, networked with me and they're still friends today and we're still you know so, uh, but not only that, it opened my eyes to a lot. So I went into there thinking, I, you know, I'm a truth seeker. Um, and, oh, who's this guy, Greg Hallett? I looked into him. I was like, well, this don't seem right. Let's carry on looking into it. But through that journey, it's kind of led me down lots of paths as well. And it's, it's led me to actually buff up on, on, on English history, uh, of, of history of the royals, things like that as well, like you say. Um, and also it's brought attention to, to some other things. And, and you, you've got to wonder whether, whether you know, this, this, is, this whole Greg Hallett thing was a, a failed psyop for some reason, or, you know, or, or even if not, just to look at the positive of, of has, has it forced people to look down a lot of paths and has it had a positive impact on awakening them, even if there was falsities in there, even if they had to learn actually there's a scam uh, on the surface of this, 
or, um, or, or some disinformation on the surface of this. Underneath, um, it's, led, it's led people to, to research more, um, as well as I, what I think is going on in the current, uh, current truth uh, climate and, and with the, Q and Q, you know, the whole Q platform. Right. Um, I, you know, I, I have to wonder whether this was all engineered for a bigger purpose. Um, and, and that's I mean, a- I've thought about that, but that's a lot for, I mean, Greg is an older guy, but it's, he's going to take a lot of slack for this from people, you know, for the rest of his life in a sense. And, and it reminds me of a song. So I'll read part of the lyrics. It's a song from the Bee Gees called I Started a Joke. I don't, I don't know if you've ever heard this song. Not this song. I know of the Bee Gees. You really got to listen to I Started a Joke from the Bee Gees because it's, it's not like any of their normal songs, but it's... um. It has the lines in it like, I started a joke, which started the whole world crying, but I didn't see that the joke was on me. I started to cry, which started the whole world laughing. All if I'd only seen the joke was on me. And then one of the other lines was, um, let's see here. I was trying to pull up the full lyrics and for some reason it doesn't seem to be pulling up the way, but it was something as if it was like, um, I started to die and the world started living. And mm-hmm. so it, it made me really think about Gray Hell in that way, wondering, because I mean, I've heard theories that he's been cloned. Yeah. Once, twice, sacrificed, sacrificed to the devil. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's an outrageous story, but um, yeah, I've always wondered, you know, it was he, he as a, as a excellent historian, uh-huh. especially when it comes to like uh, the Russian KGB stuff, when it comes to um, New Zealand, when it came to the UK, he was, he was extremely knowledgeable, but he wasn't really getting the information out there. So did he have to like play this character to get the information out there? Was, mm. is that the purpose? Um, but if that was the purpose after so long, you would think that, Mahoney and Ward to say their own ass would just come out and said that. There was a big I even expected wow. I even, expect, wow. I even expected them That's to hit me up that week after I interviewed the sisters before I put the interview out the following Friday. Yeah. I that that conversation was going on the entire time. So it it's it's just um it's ironic. And you know, because I really kind of thought somebody may reach out to me and be like, hey, look please don't expose this because we're just trying to wake people up. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was I expecting kind of almost, something like that or even a bribe. I wasn't even, I, I wasn't yeah. even bribed, man. Yeah. I'm kind of offended by that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I am too. I know I have a small dish following, but um, <laughs> you know, they, they, they've instead only offered 250 pounds for my name and address. 250 quid. Is that, is that, oh, is that all the damage I'm doing worth um, to their, Sad. to their agenda? But um no, you were saying about the clones and 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 uh, Greg Hallett, um, the Rumors of him had been murdered in two thousand thirteen. Uh, he has a habit of disappearing on people and dropping people. Uh, uh, one minute he's their friend, the next minute he's gone, and he won't talk to them. And this this really has impact. On, you know, I've seen it, witnessed it impact people who thought that he was their friend, and then they've gone. He's gone, and so oh, what's happened? He's obviously been. Uh, kidnapped by the deep state and this new one doesn't look like him and it's not him so all this is happening and actually in um, August end of August no September I think it was uh, it was around September the 4th um, there was so there was the there was uh, Charlie Ward uh, revealing Greg Hallett was lying I made a video about that that kind of um, well, for, for me, for my for my views, um, that that video kind of went viral in in, in, in sort of my terms of my channel, and that woke up a lot of people to Charlie Ward. Loads of people, floods of people were saying to me that I've hadn't subbed to him. Not that that kind of made an impact in the end, because apparently he's on like eight million uh, sign up uh, on his website now. Um, That's what I'm hearing, which is insane that that many people feed into this kind of stuff. You know, and I yeah, I can't, I can't do that to other people. No, no. You have to wonder whether those, those, some of those, that, those figures are, are bought figures. You know, I don't know, but it does seem insane. Uh, and obviously, like I said, I've made some videos on Simon Parks and Charlie Ward and how they've gone viral. So check back over my uh, videos, uh, guys. But so th- there was that, and there was a couple of other. So there was the David Mahoney uh, kind of reaction videos to that, where he's kind of saying, "Well, 
and he kind of put his foot in his mouth a couple of times and he said, well, actually, there's a secret society that chooses who sits on the throne and they chose Greg Hallett and blah, blah, blah. And it kind of all got a bit, the story got really juicy at this point. Uh, and you saw uh, uh, David Mahoney trying to dig himself out of a hole, but digging himself further in. Uh, and you saw Greg Hallett disappear. And this was, this was a kind of a massive turning point because you'd think that with all that's going on, Greg Hallett would come straight on camera, especially since... David saying he speaks to him every day and to say, hang on a minute, um, Charlie Ward was mistaken. And I've never lied about this. That will blah, 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 yada, yada, whatever he's going to say to defend himself, but nothing. And he disappeared for, from, I think it was about the 11th of, of 10th of September around that time. It was like five or six weeks. I think he kind of fell off and then he started. Just before Halloween. So about 28th of October. And then he started, then he started putting out his, his videos digging up holes in Scotland, looking for pillows. Finding Jacob's pillow. <laughs> so he'd, he'd gone to Scotland with a, a digger. Um, and he'd, digger. Uh, <laughs> he'd uh, dug up a, a, a stone, which he claims is the coronation stone, which gives him the right to the throne. And he's, yeah. he put out some royal proclamations as well two weeks ago. Um, I haven't yeah. looked at them. Uh, I tried to like look at the 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 stone the 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 whole digging videos in scotland but it's like you're going from caves to holes digging holes looking for stones uh, yeah. there is a he, he know, put out a video he, he just after his that. friend john smith you know that's yeah. one of the few people he's kept in contact with i mean you've talked about some theories about john um and, and their mm-hmm. past relations and then there's uh i can't remember the guy's name from that radio program that was really good friends with him that I told you I talked to. Oh, um, Jim Fetzer. Jim Fetzer. He's been a friend with, of Greg's for quite some time. And I didn't tell you this, but I did have a conversation about a month ago with okay. Professor George Lees. I didn't, I, oh, you might I, have I didn't record it. it, but we talked. Yeah. He apparently had some stuff going on, uh, funeral stuff, family issues and stuff, but we talked a little bit and he kind of was, Cause he was one of the people talking about Clone. Greg being sacrificed and cloned and he's still kind of in that. And the conversation was bizarre. He's a really nice guy, but it was a very, very, very bizarre. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, I tried to contact him, but um, one of the things I got from George Lee's was some of uh, Greg Hallett's deleted videos. So if you look back over um, some of my videos, guys, there's one, um, that uh, said something like, uh, it's called something like uh, Greg, uh, Greg Hallett's deleted videos or something he didn't want you to see. Anyway, it's a video of him walking around Buckingham Palace. It was from one of George Lee's videos, but I've since actually acquired the original video from the way back now. Um, and I've got that uploaded somewhere. If anyone wants to see it, put it in the, uh, ask in the comments. But um, I, uh, yeah, so I, I'd use that video. Quite cool. poor quality because um, I think I think George Professor George Lee's is, is quite up to scratch with technology. So he's like, yeah, he's not very on a laptop. There's a digital divide there. <laughs> or it's probably his digital camera from... Well, I call it a digital divide, a divide because that's what you have when old people don't understand technology and using a... Yeah. I've seen a couple of people. I think one of the interviews with... Um, or one of the videos with the original videos with the sisters, Greg's sisters, yeah. was something like it's that. filmed on a camera. Recording yeah. from her phone or camera, oh. recording her... Her computer. Yeah. <laughs> so so, so this, this, this video that I talk of is uh, of Greg walking around Buckingham Palace trying to deliver a letter uh, that says that Francisco Manuel is the rightful king of England. And he's tried to deliver it to the prime minister and he's trying to deliver it to the queen to give them notice that the Buckingham, right. the Buckingham Palace and the whole royal estate belongs to Francisco Manuel and that he is uh, Lord Chancellor to the, the rightful king who is Francisco Manuel. Regent but obviously French, deleted, Lord Chancellor. Lord Chancellor. Lord Chancellor. Well, that was a bit Australian, a bit. Okay, so the back of the Army and Navy stores on Victoria Street, through the back of the Army and Navy store, Victoria Street, Victoria Street, and the Queen Elizabeth II Conference Centre, but I can't get a conference with her. Although I represent the true King of England, she doesn't seem to want to talk to me. I wonder why. And I was refused to attend Downing Street. So we're trying to arrange a meeting between the ex Live King and Prime Minister David Cameron. Right. Requesting that he notify Queen Elizabeth II that there is a legitimate challenge to the throne. Oh, it's been a holiday movie. 
Anyway, yeah. So um, this, so he, so he had wiped all of these videos from uh, from previous where he was talking about someone else being the king, um, and this is why where we, we are saying that he was dishonest about that because he didn't talk about that. He did a whole documentary series about him, and it wasn't mentioned. And all of his previous videos like that were wiped, and it, you know, so you can watch that on my channel. But um, uh, yeah, so after the Jacob's pillow gone. Another thing is while they were out, while Mahoney and, and them were out in England with, with um, Greg, they were, they, they held those books. The cover of the book says it was co-written by two different people. I mean, I would think that these guys would have thumbed through the book. So, I mean, yeah. had they not known this, it was right in front of their faces. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing and I kept he- trying to explain to them. Like you can't, say you didn't know like it was right yeah. in front of your face yeah. like you're lying maybe about some people something. didn't want to know that they didn't want to question they didn't want to have there to be a kink in the story so they'd rather you know if, if it was brushed over in the documentary they can brush over it in their heads i don't know right but um <laughs> yeah so anyway yeah he'd done this jacob's pillow very interesting video um, you know, the, this digging up this stone. I found it quite comical, to be honest. But, uh, you know, anyway, he, he then made a video um, soon afterwards and he was talking about um, Victoria, he was talking about Queen Victoria and Francisco Manuel. So he, he's re- then reverted back to talking about, you know, this other, because there was two sides. There was, oh, well, I'm the king related to Walter Raleigh and Anne Boleyn. And there was, you know, Francisco is the right of king related to Manuel, uh, Man- Man- uh, Marcus Manuel and Victoria, but now he's talking about Victoria again. So it's kind of almost reverted back. Um, and, and I think maybe kind of backstepped and thought, you know, okay, well this, you know, my story doesn't add up here. Let's go back to the, the solid story that I had before. I don't know, but he's made several videos, like you say, after that. And I can't, I'm done with watching them. I, I feel like uh, at this point, unless someone, I've got lots of people that do review the videos, they watch them, um, because they, they, they're amused by them or, or just out of interest, out of curiosity. Uh, and they, they will tell me if there's something uh, major in there. But um, I, I can't bring myself to sit through hours and hours <laughs> further after having sat through hours and hours and hours. Some people yeah. say to me, oh, have you even watched these videos? You haven't read his documents? Man, I've read all those documents and I've watched so many hours you, you wouldn't believe of this guy. And the, the sound of his voice now, after about five minutes it kind of goes to white noise and I, I find it difficult to concentrate. So I, would, I rely on others now to do digging into whatever else he puts out, but also I'm tired of talking about him. Right. You know, so my, my last, um, my last contribution um, to helping people um, when they're looking at this, this, this theory that uh, Greg Hallett and co bring forward is, is a documentary um, because I wanted to piece together all of our work, as I said earlier, um, and and the whole my whole journey as well. I wanted to document my journey and the journey of others and how we connected and what's the story. I mean, because this has been a roller coaster for me and others over the last sort of six months with this whole story. Yeah, uh, so, it has. Uh, yeah, and and like for me personally, um, you know, I've been wanting to. I've been wanting to do this with you. I know we've had to reschedule and stuff, but this yep. is like clo- complete closure for me unless he accepts, you know, my invitation to of come course. on for an interview, which I'm not holding my breath about. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of talking about it myself. So like I said, I want to lay it to bed. Um, but the funny thing I thought you would get is um, I really am comparing this to like a failed sitcom <laughs> that used to be successful, like something like, yep. um, the walking dead i uh-huh. think they're still putting out episodes yeah they've got one more series left it's already kind of uh 
it's it's in its decline. It, it's yeah. kind of hit its peak already, and and so, it's so like what they've done is they've said they're going to do a movie, one more series. So I'm relating that. It's kind of like me saying like, let's do this interview with you, Rice, uh, Chris, Rice, and let's do a uh, a documentary of everything, and then let's just put it to bed because it's done. It's right. Finished. Exactly. So anyway, yeah, this is closure for me too because I have the intention of being my like this being kind of my last talk just about Craig. I mean, if it pops up, I'll talk about it. If something else crazy happens, of course, I'll report on it. But um, for now, or, or for, for good, I, I'm thinking, because I'm bored of it, and I think many other people are, and I hope they're finding this talk interesting, but I think it's, it's come to the end uh, now. And uh, so I've got, I put out five, pe- five parts of that documentary. I was going to make it into one sort of film, but I, I don't That'd be do a cool. series. Just because there's so much there to talk about, yeah, um, and, and cutting it down is extremely hard. So I figured, oh, we've got to do this always in three hours, and I've, I've done about five hours worth already. Wow! Um, I tried to make it um, as uh, sharp and and you know, um, not not to put too much fluff in there. So it's it's kind of, um, but I, I wanted to get my whole story in. I didn't want to cut, cut over loads of bits and just show the just show that you know the, the biggest pieces of information because there was a journey behind it. It's an interesting story. Um, so I think I'm at part five. I think that maybe in part four, uh, I talked about people that I connected with, uh, and I think that you know you and Stan were uh, featured in that a bit, um, uh, and also um, I think some of your some of your videos talking about what you were doing at the time. Okay. So, I have to check those out. Yeah, I've been so much has been going on, but I definitely yeah. would like to check those out. And um, and I mean, I appreciate you putting all this together in one place. And and I think this conversation, you know, just from beginning to end here, you know, we've summarized kind of both of our experiences pretty well. So I mean, if people aren't familiar, this would give everybody kind of the gist of the situation. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, so much. And we've condensed, we've condensed a lot of the stuff down in about 30 minutes, which that's impressive considering his, uh, and we didn't go into detail with everything, but no. gave a pretty good like, overview, timeline roughly. overview summary. So, I mean, um, yeah, it's all there, you know, it's all there now. It's all documented. If people say, well, what about this? This is legit. You know, you could look back and go, well, actually, there was a there was that part in that documentary, or there was that video that Rice or the, uh, that Chris uh, Rice did, or that that uh, M did, and um, it's all on the channel. And you know, like I say, it, this I think I'll call this video uh, um, I don't know something like the end of the story or something because for me it is. Um, even though Greg has carried on, is carrying on to put out content, um, kind of suspected that he would because he's done this before disappeared, come back, changed his story, carried on. And um, so, but what's important is when we connected way back when, um, he, what, he, he was massively popular, uh, mm-hmm. insanely popular. Um, people were talking about him all over the place. And um, we had some, some questions and some concerns. And we're, we're six months later now. And um, he's, you know, he's following, he still has a following, but... Uh, really most people are wise to it you know yeah. and that's, well, i think that, we did a good job we together do. we can't convince everyone we can't um you know no matter what you show some people if they've really got it in their head and they're really that emotionally attached to it they'll find it hard to detach from it and it's like co- cognitive dis- dissonance isn't it you convince yourself <laughs> something is is so true and you have done for so long that when someone comes and bursts that bubble you you really do not want to believe them and in fact uh, you even go to to extents to convince yourself that this person is a liar, a shill, a fraud, or, you know, he's or he's just wrong, or he he doesn't know the truth, or he watches too much mainstream media, or any of these things that these people say about me, and, and perhaps that you might hear sometimes. Um, but you know, I certainly get that, and uh, you know, I want to go on record. I'm a tr- I'm a truth seeker. Um, I know that I do a lot of um, looking into people and trying to see whether they are genuine or truthful, uh, especially when they garner huge followings. Because I worry that some of these 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 things and, and these claims that they have inside Intel, et cetera, I'm worrying about the impact that it's going to have down the line for, for people. Um, and, I, and I think I can make a difference. And I'm, I, I'm confident now that I and you and the others 
really have made a difference to a lot of people. I've got a lot of messages that I save them as well. You know, it's, it's not an ego thing. It's, it's actually to remind myself, I, you know, I put them in a folder and I go back over them and go, right. Yeah, actually, you know, there is a lot of people that are thanking me, you know, Oh, you've, you've, you brought this to my attention and I would already donated money and I feel like a fool, but you know, I used your video, your contents and showed them to my dad. who was really in deep and, now he's questioning not only him, but he's questioning other people he listens to. You know, I think that it's important to remind ourselves um, the good that we do, because I get lost sometimes. And, and, and sometimes I, you know, I feel like it's, it's useless what I'm doing, especially when you've got a lot of people saying, who are you? I don't want to listen to you. Let me ask I you this. Lots of followers. I want to listen to him. And he is giving us solutions and hopium. What's your solution? I don't have a solution, but what I can do is I can research people, I can look at what they're saying, I can try and give you some logic and sense from, from my perspective, and then you can listen to me, you don't listen to me, at least I've given my honest opinion or evidence that I've found, and then it's in your hands. You know, you don't have to listen to me, I'm not forcing you to listen to me, but um, I know that a lot of people are thankful for um, some of the content that I've put out. Let me ask you this, man, has going down this road and seeing people that are potentially giving out false information and potentially calling those people out is essentially kind of what's going on. Has yeah. that made you reflect on yourself and your actions and how you interact with people since then? Yes. Um, it's made me very conscious about what I say and how I could if I'm not careful about what I project or if I give my beliefs or opinions too strongly, how that can lead people. Um, because I have always said, I don't want to be a debunking channel, right? I had someone call me a debunking channel the other day and I kind of went, well, no, I'm not. I, I'm a truth seeker. They were like, well, you are. I know what a debunking channel looks like. And I thought to myself, well, yeah, I kind of am because I've been, I've been kind of gone after the whole Greg Hallett scenario. I, it then led me to lots of other people that I thought, hang on, he's not, he, he's not genuine. He's not. And I, and I've soon worked out that it's kind of is my forte, uh, you know, is, is reporting on that sort of stuff, but right. I don't want to do that. I also want to talk about things that I believe in, but I always thought I should finish this Greg thing first because I don't want other people to think, well, M believes that, uh, you know, that the ETs could, could exist you know that ufos uh, are real uh, things like that and so therefore uh, we shouldn't listen to him if they have if they are that way inclined of thinking um do you know what i'm trying to say i'd rather yeah. come from a place of you know what you don't know anything about what i theorize but i'm going to show you what other people are saying from a logical standpoint um and, and so i've kind of been pigeonholed in this uh and i spoke to i think tom carhill i caught up with him the other day uh, i don't speak to him often but it's funny enough i did and i said you know i, I want to look into this i think this is a good idea i don't want to be a debunking channel and he said but what you're doing is you know it is is really good it's a service to others um you know it, you're good at it and you know you should be and i was like well i don't want to be labeled as that um so you know i still want to make other content i don't want to be calling people out and people are saying is, is that all you do and, and are you, who are you going to go after next? Are you just going after people, going after truthers left, right and centre? Well, no, I'm not. If, if you look at my content, I've focused, I, I, I hyper-focus. I hyper-focused on Hallett. Now I'm hyper-focused on something else. Um, because I don't want to then have, look at all these people, call these people. I don't like doing it either, you know, uh, really. I don't, I don't want to be seen as a negative, you know, lots of people saying I'm 3D-minded. But how can you be, you know, how can, how can I be 5D and sit back and, and fully believe or know that people are li at least some people are lying and misleading people and not say anything because I don't want to be negative. Right. That's not, that's not being 3D. From what, I, from, from what I'm doing, I saw something uh, the other well, day. Is, the, is there a manual, though, for how to be 3D and how to be 5D? Like, is there, is there well, something that somebody's giving you that they can tell you how this is, like, a universal way to operate? Because I don't think that anybody has experienced this and anybody really is an expert in this subject to even try to give no. anybody advice. Exactly. I just think that if I'm doing what I think is – what I feel is right in my heart and I'm doing – and I think that I'm helping others, then that's as – kind of high as high vibrational I can be and I'll, I'll still fall into the trap of sometimes you know 
maybe making a joke or, or, or mocking something because I think it's absurd. But um, I try to rein myself in. I don't want anyone, even people that I will say, look, this guy is not genuine. I don't want them to fall into, I don't want them to have hate directed towards them. I don't want them to fall into mental health, uh, adverse mental health. Uh, you know, I want, I just want a better world. And I think that's what a lot of people want. And I think that that's what people are not getting at the moment. They are, there's too much division and it's like, okay, well, you are a shill because you're not listening to these people. You don't believe in these people. Or if you don't trust the plan, um, you are evil, you're a Satanist. Like, you know, do you know what I mean? People, they, they get so easily labelled and, and what they're not realising is, is how everything that's going on around them is, is creating this division and is creating this tendency for them to want to say, you know what, you're on the other side. Um, but really, I want a better world, you want a better world. And we are both kind of giving a similar message or trying to help people. Um, maybe we're helping people in different ways. But really, am I your enemy? Because you're not right. mine. Find common bonds. I mean, uh, what I've noticed is that we, a lot of times when people are looking at another fellow man or woman, they're, they're looking at the differences and what separates us. Instead, mm -hmm. you know, try to look at what we have in common and what brings us together. I think that if we can start changing that mindset and going under the idea of treating people how you want to be treated, um, you know, sometimes you make mistakes, you know, but we, if you learn from those mistakes and you learn from all the good and bad things and positive and negative things. And that's why I call what I do practice change because you can practice daily. And, and if you do make a mistake, then just learn from it. Um, and what you said, and, and what I was trying to get at with that question I was asking you about, has it changed your behavior and how you look at yourself is, you know, if you're going to start calling people out, you don't want to be the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah. And so it's, for me also, it's, it's, you know, it makes me mindful of my own behavior, like you were saying, um, because there's power in words, there's power in thoughts. And so when you start changing that mindset, when you start going down a path of looking for truth, it starts putting a mirror to your face. And yep. you really have to do a lot of self-reflecting in the process that a lot of people don't see those things. And sometimes we don't even notice them until after the fact, but it's growing pains. <laughs> but this has been, I mean, it's been a great episode. I've really enjoyed doing this um, and getting this kind of closure out so I can be done talking about it. I have. It's so, it's so easy talking to you. And I think that some of the things that I really wanted to say that I was probably going to make another video about, um, I'm glad they come, kind of come out while talking to you. Um, so yeah. Sorry I'll, for interrupting. I just it's sometimes, but I like our flow of the conversation. I'm just sorry for sometimes like just kind of punching myself in there. No, nah, no, nah, <laughs> nah, it's fine. I find myself uh, talking too much and then not stopping talking. So sometimes it is good for you to go on that point, <laughs> just to kind of stop me on my flow because uh, and. Uh, then you just kind of have to remember what else you were going to say at the end. And uh, yeah, we've, there's definitely a good flow of conversation. I think that this is, um, has, has been really, uh, it's been really some growth happy. since our last time talking. I yeah, guess, absolutely. Both of us, which is good. There's a lot to stop because we've talked several times personally uh, since, um, but actually a lot of what we've just said, we didn't really talk about, mm -hmm. uh, especially not the second half of the conversation. So it was really good to catch up with you. People are witnessing that um on the video uh, because we haven't kind of talked about a lot of that and it's just come out you know so um it was a good chat good flow um sure so i really appreciate connecting with you again uh and in the future um let's do it not about greg hallett yeah man we can just, just i mean once things kind of settle down with a lot of this political stuff i want to start exploring some different areas i've just been when you said hyper focus, that's one of my big hyper focuses is everything that we, especially here in the United States, with everything that's going on. You know, I got I was in D.C. on January sixth. Um, I'm yeah, not sure. not pro or anti Trump. I'm not pro uh, Biden. Um, I'm pro the people, pro freedom, pro liberty, yeah. and um, that's the side that I'm on. And that's the path that's kind of really where I'm focusing a lot of my efforts on. Mm -hmm. um, but, but definitely, dude, I definitely would like to be able to collaborate on some stuff in the future. So let's definitely stay in touch. Well, you know, uh, yeah, we, we, we do and we will. And so I'm sure this is not the last time we'll meet on camera. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been great connecting with you. 
I think well, it's a good time to close it. Um, so, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, it's been Chris Rice, of Rice TV, uh, MC Crew Truth. Uh, if you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe to our channels. And, uh, yeah, catch you soon, Chris. And thanks for watching, guys. Awesome. Much love. Take care.